Welcome back to 100 Days of Logic with Carnades.org. Today we are going to be doing our final day of propositional logic, looking at the answers to the problems presented for indirect proof. Let's take a look at the problems if you haven't checked them out already. Our goal is to use the 18 rules of inference and indirect proof to get from the premises to the conclusion. Note that at least one of these problems, you could use conditional proof as well. Our goal here is to be practicing indirect proof, so I would strongly encourage you to try to find a way to do it with indirect proof. If you've already solved these problems, you want to check your answers, you've gotten stuck, or you just want me to give the answers, follow me. If not, I suggest you pause the video as there are spoilers to follow. Let's take a look. So our first problem, P or Q, implies not P, and we want to conclude not P. As with all indirect proof problems, what you're going to want to do is assume the opposite of the conclusion, or assume the opposite of whatever you want. The opposite of not P is just going to be P, assumed indirect proof. We'll draw our line going down. From P, we can add on a Q, premise to addition. And from P or Q, we can get not P from 1, 3, modus ponens. We can then conjoin P and not P to get a contradiction from 2, 4, conjunction. That allows us to conclude the opposite of our assumption, because... Assuming that gave us a contradiction, so the opposite must be the case. And we get not P from 2 through 5 indirect proof. Next up, we'll try premise 1, P implies P, implies Q. Premise 2, Q or R implies S, and we want to conclude S. Well, once again, whenever you're doing an indirect proof, you should always assume the opposite of whatever you want to conclude and see if it leads to a contradiction. So we conclude not S, assumed indirect proof. Once we get not S, we can use modus tollens to go backwards up premise 2 and get it's not the case that Q or R, 2, 3, modus tollens. De Morgan's rule lets us get not Q and not R, which we can simplify down to just not Q, 5 simplification. Then we can, once again, use modus tollens to get, it's not the case that P implies P, 1, 6, modus tollens. If you know anything about tautologies, you know that this is not going to end well for our assumption of not S, because P implies P is a tautology, and the denial of it will lead to a contradiction. But if you're a little unsure of why that works, let's take a look. So, we're going to do implication to get, it's not the case that not P or P, premise 7 implication, De Morgan's rule get us not not P and not P, and we'll do double negation to get P and not P from premise 6. That is a contradiction, so we can conclude the opposite of our assumption. That'll just be S from 3 through 10, indirect proof. <clears throat> Let's take a look at something a little bit more difficult. We have P or Q implies R and S. S or T implies U or not R, and U or W implies it's not the case that P and S, and our goal is to conclude not P. Well, once again, if we have that single variable, we should always think of indirect proof for a method to get to that conclusion. We're going to use the opposite of that variable, so we're going to just assume P here and draw our line going down. Now. We can get from that P or Q. The reason we want that is so we can do modus ponens on premise 1, allowing us to conclude R and S, 1, 5 modus ponens. R and S can be simplified down to just S, premise 6 simplification. The reason we want S is so we can do S or T, 7 addition. That will let us conclude U or not R from 2, 8 modus ponens. This is useful because we were already able to get R from R and S, premise 6 simplification. and that's going to allow us to conclude U from premise 9, premise 10, disjunctive syllogism. What can U do for us? Well, U can be joined with W to get U or W, premise 11, addition, and then conclude it's not the case that P and S from premise 3, premise 12, modus ponens. Now, wait a second, we also had both P and S in premises 4 and premises 7, so we can get P and S. From premise 4, premise 7, conjunction. We now have not P and S and P and S. We can conjoin these into P and S and not P and S. Premise 13, premise 14, conjunction. We end up with a contradiction, and that contradiction allows us to conclude the opposite of our original assumption, which is just going to be not P from premise 4 through 15, indirect proof. Finally, we have the final problem of propositional logic here. Premise 1, P implies, Q or not Q implies, 
R or S. Premise 2, S implies it's not the case that T or not T. And we want to conclude P implies R. As I mentioned, this is a problem that can be done with conditional proof, but we're going to focus on indirect proof here, and we're going to see if we can do it just with indirect proof. So, if we want to conclude P implies R, we're going to need to assume the opposite of that. This would, of course, be it's not the case that P implies R, assumed indirect proof. And we'll draw our line going down. What can this let us do? Well, we'll use implication to turn it into a nice little disjunction, so we can use some De Morgan's rule on it. To get not not P and not R, premise 4 De Morgan's, we'll double negate it down to P and not R. We can then simplify it down to P. What does P do for us? Well, it allows us to use that for modus ponens in premise 1, so that we can conclude Q or not Q implies R or S. Premise 1, premise 7, modus ponens. Now, I'm going to do something a little tricky here. I want Q or not Q. I want to prove that somehow. I know that that's a tautology, so were I to assume the opposite of it, I could conclude eventually Q or not Q. So I'm going to do another mini indirect proof inside my bigger indirect proof. I'm going to assume it's not the case that Q or not Q. Draw my line going down. Then I'll use De Morgan's rule to get not Q and not not Q, and end up with not Q and Q. Premise 10, double negation. That's a contradiction, so it must be the case that Q or not Q. 9 through 11, indirect proof. Note that I did that without reference to any outside premises, so that's actually going to be a tautology, Q or not Q. I can then use that to conclude R or S from 8, 12 modus ponens, and not R I can get from simplifying premise 6 way back up there, which will allow me to do a disjunctive syllogism and end up with S. What can S do for me? Well, S could be used with modus ponens to run through premise 2, but I'm actually going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to see if I can get the opposite of the consequent of that implication back in premise 2. In order to get the opposite of the consequent, I'm just going to assume the consequent and try another indirect proof. So, once again, we have, it's not the case that T or not T. This should look very similar to the last mini indirect proof that we did with, it's not the case that Q or not Q. De Morgan's rule lets me get not T and not not T, and so I end up with not T and T, premise 17, double negation, so I'm allowed to conclude it's not the case that, it's not the case that T or not T, from premise 16 through 18, indirect proof. What that lets me do is do modus tollens back up premise 2 to end up with not S from 219, and finally to get S and not S from 15 and 20 conjunction. That's a contradiction, so I can end up with and conclude the opposite of my original assumption, P implies R, 3 through 21, indirect proof. Whew, that was a lot of work. A challenge for you. This problem can definitely be done with conditional proof, but if you can do this problem using only the 18 rules of inference and not conditional proof or indirect proof, I will definitely feature your answer in a future video, because that would be quite an impressive feat. All right, this has been the final video for propositional logic. Next up, we're going to be looking into categorical logic, the second half of our 100 days of logic. Watch a new video every single day for 100 days here at Carnadies.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.